Remixing rural texts, local texts, global contexts. I'm Shannon Carter, Associate Professor of English at Texas A&M Commerce, PI on this project, and a rhetorician who studies community engagement across local landscapes and over time, especially with respect to the texts that are generated and circulated to enact change, local, everyday, ordinary, altogether extraordinary change. Remixing Rural Texas is a digital humanities project emerging from this work and associated collaborations, funded in part by a recent National Endowment for the Humanities Digital Humanities Startup Grant. In essence, Remixing Rural Texas offers an innovative approach to the problem of access to primary source materials that plagues researchers and archivists, especially those investigating rural minority and other historically underrepresented group communities. Rural, geographically isolated communities are perhaps most vulnerable in this respect, actually, especially or maybe particularly when it comes to humanity scholarship investigating race relations in local contexts, for the very reason that it's dependent upon people to collect and preserve those artifacts. This project, Remixing Rural Texas, builds on the success of and in partnership with the Heirloom Project, a state-funded preservation project led by a and Commerce Archivists designed to digitize and bring together the artifacts previously scattered across the region in church basements, genealogy collections at rural public libraries, private museums, and uh, local historical associations. Many times, however, materials most crucial to this work exist not in the local museums and libraries, but in the homes, churches, and community centers of these local activists and other local citizens. For the past few years, we've been working together with the archivist to help make available uh, artifacts previously unavailable to researchers, and also to recontextualize existing artifacts across the broader historical context of the civil rights movement that is our focus. The WE, working with the University Archivists and our Instructional Technology team, is the Converging Literacy Center, a research center uh, institute founded in uh, 2007 into which individuals from the library, instructional technology, and across the disciplines and, and it, within the community have contributed in substantial ways over the years. The mission of the Converging Literacy Center, or CLIC, is to promote a better understanding of how texts and related literacy practices may develop, sustain, or even erode a civic engagement across local publics, especially among historically underrepresented groups. With a view towards promoting more robust public discussion, CLIC supports historical, theoretical, and empirical research on rhetoric and writing as manifested in everyday local contexts and over time. CLIC is highly attentive to new media's role in our increasingly literate lives. Thus, projects emerging from an informing click often engage new media as both an object of inquiry and the form through which these findings are communicated. Likewise, CLIC develops educational and outreach initiatives designed to address civic issues. This is where our project comes in. This current project, Remixing Rural Texas, frames critical race narratives in rural Northeast Texas by bringing together archival research with three traditions increasingly common in the digital humanities, aggregation, remixing, and geomapping tools. The, our, the Remixing Rural Texas project then will produce short videos framing critical race narratives in the region remixed almost entirely from existing archival materials and featuring information layers recontextualizing content across the region and within this broader historical context of the, of the civil rights movement and race relations across the nation and over time, especially in America, primarily in America. It's both expository and participatory in nature. Uh, though in this first phase we're going to focus on developing the expository aspects of the project in preparation for the more participatory elements we hope the prototype will enable in the classroom, in the communities, and within scholarship across the humanities. We also uh, hope and expect the prototype will be generative and so to further enable the creation of, of more vivid and useful content. What you're looking at here is something from the digital content we are producing for the prototype, a handful of five to ten minute videos remixed almost entirely from existing local history collections. And when aided by the prototype, these videos illustrate the convergence of geographical, temporal, political, and economic factors in shifting critical race narratives across these local landscapes. 
in this case by foregrounding tensions and conflicts surrounding local texts with global implications. The local texts included here uh, are the uh, integration speech announcing to faculty and staff in 1964 that East Texas State would integrate that fall, the last of two remaining public universities in the state to do so, and all of the elements that lead up to this rhetorical event, which are uh, collaboratively written uh, documents through community and very secret ones at that. Local texts like the Declaration of Rights produced by Afro-American Society of East Texas asset not long after integration and the very year after John Carlos left UTSU's track team to run for San Jose State and then to the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City and then on to history. The more local texts, however, the integration speech and the Declaration of Rights uh, circulated largely amongst these very local audiences. Both were considered successful by their authors. Both were collaboratively written uh, in community by a named organization. In uh, G's case, the integration community was a couple of years long in their running and work, and they were considered secret. Um, and their recommendations were taken forward in the, in the case of the Declaration of Rights. A very different situation um, and a very interesting one at that, both producing the desired results um, and the complexity associated with that is part of the investigation and enabled with this prototype. What we'll develop then is, uh, or research and develop, is an interactive prototype that at once embraces remix culture and foregrounds the rigorous research and citation practices characteristic of traditional humanities scholarship. The project draws from the HTML5 movement, especially open source, the open source tool PopcornJS that works to integrate uh, web content into video. Typically linear, a video presents scholars who make use of primary source materials with a bit of a problem. Where did the content come from? What about the interactive contextualizing forces enabled through print and our traditions with those, including in endnotes and um, in-text citations? And how might new media more productively capture these rhetorical moves and better communicate information that's most important to scholars? In the above prototype, what we see is our playback screen. The remix can be viewed without this tool, but the tool adds relevant dynamic content to the experience. As Von Baldeg explains in her recent review of the Open Video Conference for the Atlantic Monthly, uh, which occurred actually two weeks before I'm recording this here, Quote, the power of the remix is, is in recontextualizing content, which can be further amplified by letting the audience see the source material in its original context. And we do this by uh, linking towards it. So in this video remix, uh, this above, um, it's uh, linked to the dynamic content, including interactive layers concerning original source context. The remix above in this uh, example concerns the integration speech cited earlier. Field uh, number one, the top uh, right, displays the current audio clip and location of that source material, in this case from the oral history, uh, an oral history recorded from, with former pres university president G in 1980. Field 2 displays the current video clip, in this case pulled from, ar from archive.org to offer a rich overlay of racial integration in educational settings elsewhere and at this time. Um, that's the dynamic content behind the two static images. Um, field number 3 uh, images displays the uh, displays the current image. In this case we've got two. The first on the far left is a photograph for promotional materials of James G.G. in his office pointing at a northeast Texas region on the map for a few, a, a few years after he became university president in 1947, a position he would hold for nearly 20 years and then more than a decade before campus would integrate under decree by Board of Regents in 1964. The clipping from the Dallas Morning News appeared in 1964 and it's found its way into our remix via its placement amongst G's papers at A&M Commerce, alongside similar news clippings and among artifacts further complicating his well-known status as a staunch segregationist um, and our complications more generally. Um, all artifacts are uh, available in the Northeast Texas Digital Collections and we'll link to the same. Um, the fourth con uh, field offers further context for the relevant clip, uh, including above and also drawing like, uh, from broader historical context, including civil rights cases as relevant. Uh, field number five, uh, most artifacts included in the remix are licensed in Creative Commons and thus remix uh, 
encourage further remix and reuse. Uh, field number six uh, in the timeline to reveal local events across broader historical context. Um, field number seven map to feature a specific location under discussion um, through geo maps and Google Maps. Field number eight, a footnote providing additional relevant factual evidence and especially scholarly sources of note and contributing to the analysis, including the theoretical framework, which is heavily influenced by critical race studies and, and uh, several uh, scholars in uh, rhetoric and composition. All of the above links back to the original source content, context and, orig and additional relevant information. These are our goals. This innovative approach to the problem of access to primary source materials builds upon and extends current research, of course, and includes use of data source annotation tool developed for the prototype, building from open source options like Popcorn JavaScript, like this, especially the Popcorn Maker, which is now in beta. It was quite by accident, really, that my long search for a solution to the limits of existing tools for presenting video remixes, scholarship, and via the web that I ran across this option in development right as we were putting together our application materials for NEH. Not long, in fact, before the materials were due, this wonderfully generous remix community yielded this beauty, this one above, on uh, January 11, 2011. The materials were due the very next month. Remixing Rural Text is absolutely inspired by this particular use of popcorn JavaScript by um, remix artist Jonathan McIntosh, aka Rebellious Pixels, through his demo of an HTML video utilizing uh, that same framework. The video in demo is his popular remix, Right Wing Radio Jack. Here's how McIntosh explains his goals in creating the demo. Quote, I have long been an advocate for remixers to transparently cite their sources as part of promoting open video, claiming our fair use rights as a way to make it easier for others to remix the same materials in alternative ways. In the current project, we are likewise working to transparently cite sources. For us, however, the goals include re attending to the scholarly value of, of, of original source content and uh, transparent and the new contextual recontextualization the remix enables. We are primarily concerned with rigorous transparent, transparent citation practices as a way of promoting sustainable and rigorous study of local contexts across these global landscapes, especially with respect to investigations of previously understudied groups in under-resourced areas of the country. As mentioned, the vast majority of our content will be housed in the Northeast Texas Digital Collections at G Library, licensed as often as possible through Creative Commons. Other artifacts may be drawn from the Library of Congress or the Prelinger Archives at archive.org, but as much as possible, we work with artifacts in the remix of historical significance to this particular narrative and the relevance of the critical race narratives that are unfolding in our research. The project goals thus emerge from and informed by national linked projects attending to the global dimensions of text use and production in everyday local contexts. Established networks for a final project and dissemination will aggressively explore potential linkages across these national contexts and dif disciplines through the digital humanities. Uh, we, want to we see this project as enabling richer archival material development and remixes generated by both students and community concerning this region, but we are also excited about what may be possible when we consider such locally driven content and narratives in conversation with other deeply local and related narratives. What can we learn when we bring these layers of information together in one space? What can researchers develop from this conversation? What can researchers and scholars begin to understand about local context with implications for a larger global national context in our American identity? The audience for remixing rural Texas is threefold. First, scholars in rhetoric and composition who are increasingly interested in rhetorical agency among historically marginalized groups and within everyday local contexts. Second, uh, college students, undergraduate and graduate students learning to conduct archival research and to compose with new media. And third, community members likewise invested in these local stories with national and even global implications. And in our experience, the sharing of these very stories brings forward additional content and, and um, a better understanding of the local. In framing these narratives surrounding race relations in this region and at a particular series of moments throughout the 20th century, the project provides researchers and others space to resist and extend interpretations and evidence. By mapping these events, both geographically and temporally, the project provides methods for visual analysis of race relations in comparison with other places, times, and artifacts. 
As a prototype for an in-depth analysis of translocal phenomena, the project might enable future researchers uh, to trace patterns of the same across multiple sets of inquiry and data sets. In the end, and this is really our goal, to help us try to learn about uh, who we are as uh, an America in the 21st century by digging into these local, very local, often understudied portions of America, maybe in a way reenacting what we did in the 30s with the American Guide series and the Federal Writers Project, a Federal Writers Project 2.0 perhaps. This is our goal.